Well, hello, Knife Junkies, and welcome to episode number 151 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. You know us as the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn all about knives and knife collecting. We uh, get to dive deep and talk about knives on the Midweek Supplemental. And this week, we're going to uh, talk about some knife life news. We're going to talk about Bob's state of the collection, including a brand I'm not familiar with, Rough Rider. He's also letting something go from Riot. And then we've got a tip of the week, which I think you'll be interested in hearing about. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello there, Knife Junkie. Welcome again, as we said, to episode 151 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim, and this other guy with the beard is Bob. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Yeah, the winter beard. Yeah, it's coming back. As my wife says, Lars is coming off the mountain. Right. I uh, probably would have had to start mine last winter to uh, <laughs> be able to see anything uh, this winter. Uh, not only do I uh, have a lack of facial hair, but as you can see, what little bit I have is gray. So it's really yeah, hard. To yeah, see. <laughs> it blends in. You've got the good the good white hair. Uh, you know, I'm a swarthy eye tie, so it, it comes pretty quickly. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sucks to get old, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Midweek uh, supplemental episode. That's where uh, Bob and I have a chance to uh, talk knives and uh, a lot of uh, fun stuff this week, Bob, as well as uh, uh, I tell you, you know, speaking about luck, um, I've got to get Caleb Townsend to buy me a lottery <laughs> ticket because, well, e explain the story. Well, uh, last week we did the uh, spin the wheel for the giveaway for Gentleman Junkie Patreon members. That's uh, people who who support us at 10 bucks a month. Uh, they get uh, entered in a monthly knife drawing. Well, I accidentally put someone who is not a $10 a month supporter, uh, also a generous supporter, but not a, on that tier. And uh, that guy, ha uh, Barefoot130, happened to win. And I announced it, and then I realized uh, my mistake a day later. And I was about to talk to you about it, and then we got right. interrupted by something. And then he sent me an email saying, uh, I'm not a gentleman junkie. You need to spin the wheel again. I thought that was very cool. Uh, so um, so we did that again on Thursday night, Thursday Night Knives. And Caleb Townsend won yet again. Now, Caleb Townsend, he won our first giveaway. Um, what was that? That was the um, Cold Steel... Um, uh, SR1 knife. pocket knife. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Right. So he won that one. And then he just won the SOG Pentagon XR. He also uh, outbid everyone else on the Terzuola package on our first uh, town right. hall. So, so Caleb is, uh, is a winning guy. Uh, congratulations, Caleb. This, uh, oh, the knife is already on its way to you, the Pentagon XR. I think you'll be happy with it. Uh, so I just wanted to announce that uh, Caleb Caleb Townsend is the winter and Barefoot 130 is a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you both. That's right. That's right. Well, and uh, if you would uh, like to get your chance to uh, get in on the Knife Junkies uh, monthly knife giveaway drawing, the next one is uh, Thursday, October 15th. That's the third Thursday of every month that uh, the Knife Junkie does the uh, giveaway on Thursday night knives. And uh, we use the spinning wheel. So, uh, I don't know. You know, if if he wins again, people will think it's. <laughs> I know. <laughs> start thinking it's rigged, but I really I don't have anything to do with it. <laughs> well, uh, if he does win again, maybe maybe we'll use a different wheel. And and uh, no, I'm just kidding, Caleb. You win as many times as you win, sir, and uh, no one's going to stop you. Beautifully done. Right. Yeah, well, if you'd like to uh, get in on that, you can join the Knife uh, Junkies Patreon group. Just go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon, thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. And as Bob said, there are uh, three different levels for you to become a member. All membership levels are appreciated. And uh, in addition to uh, <laughs> stickers and appreciation, uh, uh, knife uh, drawing giveaway for the uh, the top level, the $10 a month level. You also, all levels, uh, get early access to this podcast, the Sunday interview podcast, other bonus content, that type of thing we put up on the YouTube channel, et cetera. You get early access to that. So we would love to have you uh, joining the Knife Junkies Patreon group, thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. All right, Bob, a uh, another busy show this week to talk about a lot of good stuff. We've got uh, 
Tops and K Bar in uh, Knife Life News coming up. We've also got the uh, state of the collection. A lot of um, knives coming in and going out of the the Knife Junkies collection. Uh, just kind of give us a a, a brief uh, highlight of what's to come on that segment. Uh, well, I'm going to be talking about uh, my recent foray into Rough Rider knives. You know, I've, I I have all these different uh, competing um, interests. Uh, they're all competing for the primacy uh, 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 slot. Uh, I've been really into fixed blades and Bowie knives, as you know, uh, lately, but also um, I'm always flexing in and out of a uh, slip joint phase. So uh, I decided this time I'd check out Rough Rider uh, and kind of hit the opposite end of the of the spectrum because uh, usually I go in for the GECs and uh, I wanted to check out Rough Rider and uh, I, I got a, a for a small amount of money or a relatively small amount of money, I got a haul right. of them so I could check out, kind of do a survey of them. And then also I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the Ed Calderon inspired or collaboration uh, knives that I've gotten in this week because uh, right. two, two special releases came out this week uh, yeah. and I got them both. So, and also a, uh, we'll kind of wrap up the show with a uh, tip of the week. It sounds mm -hmm. like a simple one, but it's a, uh, a valuable one, one that uh, could put some extra money in your pocket. So a good tip of the week uh, still to come here on yeah. the, uh, the Knife Junkies podcast. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. All right. Time of the week for that segment, Knife Life News, uh, what's happening in the world of knives with new product drops and uh, information and that type of thing. Uh, kind of the... Um kitchen episode of Knife Life News, if you will, Bob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a theme. And it's funny. Uh, it's kitchen knives coming out of traditionally fixed blade combat knife makers. So the first story is from Topps Knives. You know, uh, they came out originally as uh, knives for high speed operators and, uh, you know, uh, commando types and soldiers and such. And over the past 10 years or so, they've been broadening out into the into different territories, uh, um, chief among them, the outdoor stuff, you know, they, they, they started with the brothers of bushcraft blade and then, you know, had all these other outdoor knives and, and tools come after that. And then they started into the kitchen knives and, uh, two years back now at shot show. Well, what was that? Uh, I think it was 2019. Uh, they showed up tops showed up with a whole kitchen line, um, calling it the dicer set. And it's a, um, you know, like a seven inch bread knife, uh, an eight inch um, uh, you know, chef's knife, a paring knife, and then a 10 inch slicer, like a, like the, uh, the kind that looks almost like uh, when you look at a traditional butcher set, it looks almost like a scimitar. Uh, this looks like, uh, they call it a kitchen sword. In any case, they finally came out with these. They've been teasing them for almost two years. And uh, here they are. Now in the interim, they put out uh, a couple of other um, uh, knives from this set but now the whole uh, set is complete and uh it's it's an s35 vn steel which is excellent because we all know it has great edge retention and is very uh good in staining environments does that make sense is very good with moisture and high acidity things uh such as food and you know the kitchen environment so um we know tops to do this uh they will show up to a show uh, a shot show or blade show and show something, you know, like their folders, they did this and people get all excited and then it takes them, you know, a while to perfect it. And, and uh, some people might lose interest in that period of time, but to me that just says they have a great idea and they know that people are gonna love it and they're gauging interest, but they're not gonna release it until it's just so. And uh, that was the case with these knives. Uh, so it's exciting to me, I don't know, I'm kind of, um, starting to think like a, a new kitchen set is in the offing, or, or maybe not a set, but a new couple of kitchen knives. Uh, we used the shun knives we got for uh, our wedding 13 or almost 14 years ago. And uh, and also a, um, uh, a Wusthof Trident that we have around it. That's awesome. But I don't know, maybe I've been doing so much refreshing in the collection uh, down here in the man cave. Maybe, maybe the kitchen collection needs to be refreshed too. And uh, seeing those those beautiful blue G10 handles uh, and the S35 right. VN steel, you know, kind of sung yeah, to yeah. me a little bit. You had me at blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Carolina blue. There you go, man. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, I think you're probably in either two camps. You have really high-end kitchen knives or 
you don't, you know, you just think mm -hmm. a knife is a knife. And uh, I know we've got tons of knives in the kitchen drawers and I kind of never know which one to use. And the one I always think about using. And then the second one I use, and oftentimes the third one never does the job that I want hmm. to, to do. So I think some education on kitchen knives just in the general public is probably uh, something that's uh, uh, sorely needed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's a quick tip just right now while we're sitting here, Jim. Um, okay. You know, I spent uh, summers working in an Italian restaurant in the kitchen and uh, well, two summers uh, and uh, did a lot of I was prep chef, uh, not prep chef. What was I? I was called pantry. I was in the pantry during a, a busy <laughs> at, a, at a busy lunch uh, uh, restaurant, uh, kind right. of a fancy place. Um, and pantry makes all the salads and prepares all the desserts. I didn't actually make the desserts. I just prepared them, put them on plates, made them look pretty. But I made the salads and I did all of the prep for the rest of the kitchen, most of the prep for the rest of the kitchen. So I was there early in the morning cutting stuff over, you know, and I love that because uh, right. every week they had three sets of knives that went out, got sharp and brought back. Everyone wow, in the sets. kitchen. Yeah. yeah. Everyone in the kitchen did this thing, Jim. They all had one knife and they used it for everything. And it was usually an eight inch or in this kitchen, they were 10 inch, but they, they, as they get sharpened, they slowly get a little <laughs> smaller, but eight inch or 10 inch chef's knife, always make sure that that's sharp and use it for everything. Really. You can, you can use it for almost anything. You know, maybe if you're going to peel an apple, you want something smaller. Uh, but uh, so I would say in your kitchen, find that one knife that really feels good in your hand, send it to me. I'll get it wicked sharp, send it back to you. And then you use that. No one else touches it. Well, maybe the no one else touches it thing isn't isn't going to work in your kitchen, but uh, it's either me yeah. or my wife. Just use one <laughs> knife. Yeah, interesting. All right, I know there's. Um, I think they're German, but and I couldn't tell you the brand because I don't know. I don't look at it, but they're uh, white handle and they're several different sizes. And the one I kind of really like most is a little teeny paring knife, mm, and then they yeah. have kind of a, 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 a medium size that's uh, really sharp. And I uh, got a you know wicked point on it. I, I like that one. And then the other favorite is kind of like the uh, the uh, the Thompson knife here that we showed. It's uh, uh, kind of got the serrated edges and it's a long blade. And uh, right, but right but now. yeah, you know, it was just one of those things. I, you know, I didn't have parents that you know were into good knives growing up, so it was just something mm -hmm. I never knew about. So uh, yeah, maybe we can find some kitchen knife aficion aficionados and. Have yeah. a kitchen knife show or something sometime. Yeah, that would actually be very cool. I know there's a, I, I need to, I need to find out more about it though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, continuing on with uh, knife life news, we have another kitchen related uh, story, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And actually leading into that, you were talking about growing up in a, so we had um, Cutco knives in our house. We had yeah. a whole mm -hmm. set of Cutco knives and Cutco is now owned by K bar up in Olean, New York. And K bar is the, is is the next story we're going to talk about. So K-Bar, another uh, company known for its fixed blade knives, uh, combat and hunting knives. But over over the years it's been around, I don't know, longer than 50, but I'm not sure how long it's been around. Uh, it is branched out into a bunch of different markets. And now it has this great new thing. Okay, so recently they've done a couple of things that have been kind of off kilter and kind of cool. They did uh, the spork. It was like half spoon, half fork but it's all kind of dressed up tactically. I think they may have done an ice cream scoop, uh, an ice cream scoop. Uh, forgive me if I'm mistaken there, but the newest thing they have is totally cool. It is a pizza wheel. And uh, anyone who knows me well enough over the past few years know that uh, I designed a, a tactical pizza wheel a few years back and I had a friend at work who's a graphics whiz make a 3D rendering of it. So when I saw him, K bar come out with one and use their uh, emblematic handle, uh, you know the fluted, uh, fluted ha grooved handle uh, with the butt cap and the and the guard, and then attach a three inch 440A stainless steel chisel ground wheel to it. Ah, it just made my heart sing. I just think it's so cool. The only thing, the only way they could make this better is stacked leather make that a stacked leather handle like their traditional K bar and impregnate it with something so that you can wash it, some sort of epoxy and, uh, and you're good to go. But in any case, I think this is so cool. I think it's awesome uh, when K bar, uh, you know, doesn't take themselves that seriously that they can create the most 
you know, popular and common combat knife in history, but also do something like this, you know, uh, that's just a little bit lighter and extremely useful. Everyone needs one. I mean, gosh, who doesn't like yeah. pizza, right? You got to have a pizza wheel. And you know yeah. what? I used to use a big uh, Chinese vegetable cleaver and I swore I would never get into the pizza wheel thing. This was years ago. I used to think I was a purist. And then, uh, and then my mother-in-law got us a pizza wheel a long time ago. And that is the way to cut pizza for real. Unless you have one of those big giant sword like things that you do that with. Oh yeah. Chances are you don't, and you don't have the space for it. <laughs> yeah. One but, of those things they have in the pizza shop. Yeah. And they cut a pizza in like two seconds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a big half moon. It's but in any case, uh, K bar, love it. I love it. Um, you know, it's cool because it 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 just is expanding the the thing and it's I don't know it's a it's a product that makes it brings a, there's a German word gemüt, gemütlichkeit I, I think is how you say it but it's like there's something about it that has a coziness to it there's something about it that warms the heart here's K Bar who's made all these deadly implements for years doing a pizza wheel love it yeah. uh, you know make more expanding their product line yeah yeah and not for nothing you look at that picture they also brew a beer there uh if you put that picture back up jim you'll see in the background behind the pizza there's a brown ale and you see a k-bar knife on the label itself and this is something that oh. they uh, that they uh, k-bar brown ale i think it is something that, right so yeah. you know they really are expanding i think that's pretty cool wow i wouldn't have i wouldn't have even uh noticed that if you hadn't pointed it out and i had no idea about that either i have an eye for beer oh, have you had the have you had the k-bar brown ale I have not. I have not. And actually, I, I am not a beer aficionado. Um, right now, I'm only into the hoppy beers. It's just, I'm an amateur. What can I say? I, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. So I'm uh, <laughs> a amateur 0, 0.0. Well, good, anyway. good, good. Yeah. So, so actually, Jim, I'm, I'm going to use this opportunity since we've been talking about kitchen knives to, to, to jump uh, to leapfrog to a to a different topic that's further down on the on the notes I sent you because no, it just can't do that. Oh, please! <laughs> it just makes sense. We're talking about kitchen knives, and oh, then right. and then later on we're going to talk. I have I planned later on to talk about the um, Ed Calderon inspired knives, which right. are inspired by kitchen knives. So I figure I'll just jump into it right now. What do you think? Go for it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so this past week. Uh, if you follow Emerson Knives or if you're interested in Ed Calderon and Ed's manifesto, he's a gentleman we interviewed here on the show who um, used to work as an anti-narcotics police officer in northern Mexico uh, for a special unit uh, before he left and came to the United States. And uh, one of the backup weapons he used, um, besides carrying around you know, an Emerson Persian and a regular folding knife, he'd carry around some version of this knife. Um, it's just a little Victorinox fruit knife. And uh, his mother used to carry around uh, a fruit knife. I'm not sure if it was a Victorinox, but it had this curved kind of blade. And she used it for everything, for utility around the house, for food, for cooking, all that kind of thing. And uh, even uh, thwarted uh, a street attack with one of these knives. And he, uh, Ed Calderon saw the use, the utility in this and started carrying one of these around in a little sheath that he made. And it's got a little snag on it. You can just draw it out of your pocket. Uh, it's unexpected, it's small, it's light, and uh, you know, it'll it'll do the trick. So um, he, uh, he meaning uh, Mr. Ed Calderon, has over the years had a number of these customized and, and made uh, like Rick Lala, the, the famous uh, custom Brazilian knife maker, makes a whole set of folding Elvias. That's what they call these, uh, his, his fruit knives. Uh, his fruit defensive knives, they call them Elvias after his mother's name, but also Emerson and Copus Designs. And then a, a number of other smaller um, custom makers make these knives and they just came in two of them just came in uh this week because uh they were released in new runs the third run of the emerson elvia look at that crazy angle of the handle to the blade and when this first came out we talked about it on thursday night knives and i remember someone commenting it may have been alex that it looks like an emerson with a broken stop pin you know, like the blade should not be that far extended back, but really it's it's intended for this Pical grip. And uh, you use kind of a uh, this kind of a motion if you're 
using, uh, if you're actually in a knife altercation, chances are your adrenaline is high and you're only gonna be capable mostly of gross motor movements instead of like very delicate uh, sort of knife fighting stuff. You're probably gonna be more like, <clears throat> and so that angle is uh, set up kind of perfectly to, to uh, reach out and touch someone and then act kind of like a cat's claw. Um, so for self-defense and for utility, an awesome, awesome knife. So this is the Emerson version. Okay. And then you, and you it does the, look like, uh, let me get myself off the screen here. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like what? Well, I was going to say it does have like a kind of a weird shape with all the, uh, with the handle angle going in one angle or one direction and the blade angle going kind of in another. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's very counterintuitive until you get it in this grip, and then it, and then it's pretty intuitive. Uh, so that is the Emerson uh, collaboration. Now, when we had him on the show, we had uh, Ed Calderon on the show. I asked him, "Why no wave?" This seems like uh, you know, being a primarily self-defense knife, it seems like this would benefit so greatly from a wave. You pull it out, boom, it's deployed. It's in your hand. Instead, you have to draw it, and actually, it's it's a pretty quick and easy process, but remember we're talking gross motor movement here and every little manipulation could, could be jacked up by the fact that you're shaky or whatever. You pull this out and then kind of get it in your grip. But so uh, maybe someday in the future, they'll, they'll make a waved version of this. Uh, I, maybe it's a smart uh, business move to get people hooked, <laughs> hooked on this uh, and then, and then offer it with the wave so that people are uh, buying two of them. Uh, who knows? This is one I'm going to get uh, some maroon micarta or wine, you know, burgundy micarta scales made for uh, probably by our good friend Thomas over at uh, Blades and Such. Uh, the second one is the Copus Designs uh, Elvia. Copus Designs, uh, John Balatsis. I hope I'm not totally butchering his name, uh, but I've butchered it many times before on the show because uh, he's in Knife News quite a bit. He and uh, so he came up under um, Matt Martin of Vehement Knives, uh, or Matt Martin was one of his teachers. And uh, I believe he may have had something in, in the making of this, but this is a, a collaboration with Ed Calderon to come up with a, they call this a utility field knife uh, that has some of the hallmarks of something as simple as this uh, um, a Victorinox fruit knife, but is a higher, higher build and, and uh, quality. Uh, these, by the way, these fruit knives are pretty high quality, extremely sharp, great tool to have in the kitchen, very, very thin, and uh, a tang that comes about halfway up this uh, injection molded handle. So they wanted to retain some of those qualities. Uh, so it's got an FRN handle, uh, but they have it curved to sort of fit the human hand better. They've got this uh, indexing notch, so you know it's in the right, right position. Same sort of uh, sheath. Uh, I think this is brilliant. It's it's sort of like the um, inverse of an Emerson wave. It catches on the inside of your pocket, and as you draw the knife out, it it uh, allows you to pull the blade out. This drops back into your pocket or falls on the floor, and uh, and then you've got the knife in your grip. Uh, this one is 154 cm. It's got a thinner, I mean, a thicker blade stock than than the than the uh, kitchen fruit knife. It's got that angle and. Uh, it's got a very stout bevel. It's not chisel ground, but a very stout bevel, almost like a um, Scandi, which, by the way, Ed Calderon thinks is an awesome edge for self-defense. Thinks more knives are great self-defense knives. Uh, but so I got these two kitchen knife related, kind of a kind of an interesting lineage uh, from from this and uh, this gentleman's mother's knife to then this, you know, years later. And, and a whole sort of genre of Pical style knife. Yeah. All starting from the kitchen. All starting from the kitchen. Yep. Yeah. Or could still be used in the kitchen. Hey, oh, uh, yeah. one, one quick comment on the uh, Copus Elvia. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed really hard getting it out of that sheath. Yes. It, yes, it will is. That, will that loosen up over time, obviously, or is that just. It will. Uh, it will. None of that. Way. No, um, you know, actually on this kind of knife, you want it to be a little bit easier to pull out because it's in your pocket. You don't want to be like yanking up. Um, so yeah. we, you actually do want this to be looser. Uh, what you can do is hit it with a heat gun and loosen it. 
or you can just draw it and put it back and draw it and put it back and wear it in. And that's what I'm going to do. Kydex will wear in, you know, it'll, it'll ease up and become easier uh, the, the more I draw it. So I have to just draw it. And the, the, the funny thing is, is getting used to the fact that I can put my finger here and draw it without, without risking getting cut. But when you look at the blade, traditionally you expect the edge to be on that curve. So, so even though I know it's not going to cut me when I draw it out, I'm like, on most knives, that would be very close to a cut, but the edge is on the other side. So there you go. Mm, yeah, good, good point. Yeah. <laughs> point. <laughs> hey. Yeah. I'm here all week, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, cool deal. Well, uh, we kind of went from Knife Life News kind of into the state of the collection, but a nice uh, kind of nice transition there. But there's uh, definitely other things to talk about in the, the state of the collection. Uh, some um, uh, new knives from, uh, I'll be honest, Rough Rider, which was a, a brand that I had not heard of, was not familiar with. But uh, just from what little bit I've heard you talk about and last week on Thursday Night Knives, seems like it's a brand in my price range <laughs> yes it's um it's an interesting you know what uh i'm not sure about the birth of uh, the genesis of the company but i do know that smoky mountain knife works the biggest online knife store in the world uh owns them and uh you know runs them as well as marbles and possibly frost cutlery but i'm not sure about frost uh, and what they're doing is working with chinese manufacturers to create uh, multiple product lines of uh, mostly traditional and slip joint knives, though they, they do make, they have their forays into modern knives, but uh, like this. So, so they have a really, really broad, just like you look at Case, and Case has all of their models. They have their trapper, they have their canoe, they have their pen blades and such. And then they just put different covers on them and create different series. In, in the traditional or slip joint knife world, uh, it's not called a scale, it's called a cover. So this has uh, like an uh, autumn honey bone cover. The bone is usually sourced from the shins of cows. Um, and uh, so Rough Rider is much like Case, except uh, they are even more affordable than Case knives. Uh, you, can, you can get a Rough Rider knife for seven bucks or 12 bucks or 14 bucks. And it's going to be high quality. You're muted right now, Jim. But yeah, it's going to be a, a high quality knife. Um, of course, they have to make up that cost somewhere. It's in labor cost in China, no doubt. You know, uh, no doubt those savings are passed along to you from their system there. But uh, we're not here to talk about international politics. We're here to talk about folding knives. Mm -hmm. and, and and I am, um, I have to admit, man, these Rough Rider knives are really, really good knives uh most of well, them I, have I, i'm sorry i just had to pop in and say definitely in my price range <laughs> 10, 20 <laughs> yeah. i mean holy cows and the couple that you've uh, shown so far great looking knives man yeah they they really are okay so 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 they've been going along for a long time doing these uh here's a here's a a, a line they have called the high what the hell is this the high high mountain line or something, high prairie. I can't, I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but this is a line where all of the covers are in that brown bone with that uh, with that carving, with that relief pattern on the, on the sides. This is a, a large toothpick. This is a four inch bladed toothpick pattern. And uh, this is a knife that are, is very hard to find. Case does not make a large toothpick. Uh, GEC has the number 12 that's been out. Uh, you can still find those in a, in a few places, but that's an inch shorter. That's a three inch. I love this old uh, style, large toothpick. I used to have a yellow one when I was a kid. So to see that you can get them from Rough Rider and in a couple of different covers and you're getting 440A steel, which, uh, you know, people may balk at, but uh, really for the kind of stuff you're gonna be using this knife for, 440A steel is 100% adequate, gets nice and sharp and it's easy to maintain. Plus they get that high luster on it and they're all mostly hollow ground. So they get very sharp. And then the, the vexing part is the fit and finish. I mean, it's really um, all of the transitions that is transitioned from material to material. Well, actually this, is, this one is an exception. There's a little void right there in the bone. But on every other one of these uh, Rough Riders I got, 
the transitions are smooth. They have uh, half stops, most of them, and many of them have flush springs on the half stop, which is a, a thing that uh, that slip joint people sometimes like. And uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit baffled by the quality of these, man. Um, this one, I showed this one to you before. This is a sow belly trapper. Now, a traditional trapper pattern has a, a clip point blade and a, a spay blade. So this has the clip point and the spay, but they made this into a sow belly. So they took the frame and they bent it. So you can kind of get more blade. You can get the same amount of blade in a smaller package with that, with that curve. And uh, it fits the hand really well. And uh, this happens to have really excellent walk and talk. And uh, it's a great knife. Paid like 13 bucks for this, Jim. And it's beautiful to look at. So um, I'm, I'm impressed might, by these things. And where might one get a Rough Rider? Is it, do they have like a website? Or are they on Amazon? Well, or uh, I guess the best place to get them is Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Got this one from oh, my okay. wife. That's a, a traditional pattern obviously for women. Um, my wife likes cool footwear, so I figured cool footwear and knives, but look at the beautiful composite wood handle. I mean, there. So, and then this, even this little kind of novelty knife, sharp, no blade play, you know, walk and talk the whole nine yards. This cotton sampler. I don't know where else you can get this, uh, a cotton sampler. This is a mini version, but this is a uh, this is a traditional pattern that's kind of off the beaten path. Last week when I announced I was going to be getting this, I called it a tobacco sampler, um, which was wrong, <laughs> obviously. It's a cotton sampler. I was thinking of southern crops, you know. So, uh, but I mean, where else do you get one of these? So before I wrap the Rough Rider, um, the Rough Rider uh, conversation, I'll, I'll, I'll hit on these two knives that they just came out with that have that are uh, blockbusters. But here's a final uh, example here. This is a marbles. I have a feeling they use the same factory as the Rough Riders. Uh, this is also owned by Smoky Mountain Knife Works. This is the only place I could find an elephant toe, or uh, this is also called a um, uh, sunfish knife. It's an equal ended jack, or if you think about it, a big, big, big pen knife. With a, with a very broad blade that was uh, initially intended to be batoned through rope, like on ships. Got to cut a rope, boom, boom, hit it with a mallet, and then you fold it up and you don't have to carry a big sheath knife. But in doing a little bit of research, I found that these knives, these uh, toenails, uh, elephant toenails or um, sunfish knives were used mostly by Midwestern carpenters and electricians. Funny, a little funny bit of... A uh, bit of information there, but it's got a beautiful, smooth white bone handle, and was twelve bucks. So this one does not have the the most awesome fit and finish, uh, but if you were interested in a sunfish knife and you just cannot find it unless you're willing to drop five hundred bucks on an antique, great place to go check it out. Well, and twelve bucks for somebody that's an electrician or a carpenter that's going to be using their knife, you could go through a whole bunch of those even if they weren't the best of quality. But yeah. uh, you're saying they are very good quality. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're going to probably, if you use it a lot, uh, though it gets very sharp, you're going to have to keep it. You're going to have to maintain that edge. 440A mm -hmm. is not the, is not the, the stoutest of steels, but uh, it'll, it'll get the job done um, most definitely. So Jim, before we, like I said, I wanted to talk about yeah. these two knives. These two, excuse me, have been blockbusters for, uh, uh, for Rough Rider and for Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I'll, I'll talk about the first one. This is the Blue Denim Micarta Work Knife. It is uh, sort of the sequel to their first work knife, which was in black micarta. And I have a feeling that was paper micarta, if it's anything like uh, the other black micarta I have from these guys. Um, but who knows? Maybe it was canvas. Don't have it. But uh, the point is, this is an excellent work knife. You got the Warncliffe blade. You got excellent walk and talk. You've got all the stylings and trappings of the uh, of the desirable and very hard to find Great Eastern Cutlery uh, number forty seven Viper. This looks pretty much it's a dead ringer for it. I'm not saying they copied it. It's a traditional pattern, but uh, I've always wanted a GEC Viper. Never got my hands on one, so this uh, right now is filling that void. Um, not that I'm actively looking for one. Uh, yesterday I had this 
uh, doing some chores around the house. And I opened a bunch of clamshell packages with that. And it was as if those clamshell packages weren't there. Uh, this is a $16 knife and they're flying off the shelves. I believe this was the second restock that I got of these. Um, the black handled my car to work knives went just like that. And uh, it's blue, Jim. Yeah, you got me. Blue, great knife, uh, great price point for me. I know a lot mm -hmm. of our listeners may not, uh, you know, like Rough Riders, may not like a sub twenty dollar knife or sub one hundred dollar knife or whatever. But uh, you know, me just starting out, you know, trying to get into knives and actually use them for a little bit of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all I need right there. That's I, I am so glad you you told me about Rough Rider. <laughs> well, at it is a great way. I know this is kind of a cliche because everyone mentions this, but uh, you know when you when you watch reviews. But it is a great way for um, it's a great way for you to check out patterns you might be interested in. Do I want to carry? If I got a stockman, if I've spent the money and and really found a really good expensive stockman, would I carry it? Do I want a three bladed knife? I don't know. Let me check this out. I'll buy it for this amount of money and. But then you'll end up getting it, liking it, and using it. Um, it's also a great way if you're like a collector and you just want, I want as many different canoe knives as I can get, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, a great point. But great also point. Uh, great, great but point on, about uh, getting, no great point about getting one in hand, carrying it, feeling it, seeing if you like the pattern, like you said, without spending, you know, multiple hundreds of dollars. Maybe you spend twenty bucks or less to to learn that you don't really like this style. So yeah, great yeah. point. Great point. Or to learn that, wow, I really like this style and I really like this knife and I don't have to yeah. seek out a number 47 and pay, you know, 300 bucks to who, whomever on the secondary market is trying to rake me over the coals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so the, the last one, this is their bow, yeah. bow trapper. Now I accidentally called this one, you know, like I called the other one, the, the tobacco sampler. I called this a sow belly trapper and you can see why it, Kind of has the sow belly shape, uh, but this is the bow trapper. It's a single bladed trapper, which I like. Um, it's like uh, sort of their version of the slim line by Case, except it's got this beautiful teardrop curved handle and uh, just a very, very good looking knife. And the reason I'm talking about this one is this is a new one for them that they've been pushing quite a bit. And, uh, and I believe this is a harbinger to their, they just recently, they being Smoke, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, the people behind Rough Rider Knives, just came out with an announcement video this past week saying uh, that they're going to be coming out with a premium line of Rough Rider. I think it's called Rough Rider Reserve, if I remember correctly. Uh, they just have dialed it in, dialed in their knife making and also their relationship with an excellent manufacturer. And I think it's the guys who are making this. That is black paper micarta. I'll, I'll go to the mats on that. Um, and then that beautiful nickel silver shield, nickel silver bolsters, copper liners, plus red G10 liners. Beautiful, rather thick blade for a for a traditional. This is the only this is the only misstep right here, a little fit and finish issue right there. And then this uh, odd sort of saber grind. You don't see saber grinds often on. Uh, traditional or slip joint knives. You see them on Northwoods knives. Uh, they, they always have that sort of uh, blade geometry. This thing is so crazy sharp. I mean, I saw how thick it was. I was like, hmm, what's that going to be like? This thing is uh, a really, really sharp and excellent knife. Three inch blade. Uh, the one fault I have with it is the pull. It's, it's got a very light pull. Um, obviously not the end of the world. When you're using the knife, you're, you're, exerting downward pressure. You're not exerting pressure on the spine, but I would prefer a slightly stronger spring on that one. But. Oh, okay. So that's what it's got to do with when you say light, light pull that you're talking about the, the tension of the spring. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, 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 slip joint, uh, I shouldn't say nerds, slip joint aficionados um, rate the pull of a knife on a scale of one to 10. This is hmm. about, this is about a seven. I, I mean, on my scale of one to 10, who right. knows? it's, it's right. totally subjective. Like when people look at lockup and they go, oh, that's at about 37% lockup right there. You know, I'm like, really? Because to me, it looks more like 49%, you know, so everyone's I'll, percentage uh, is different. I'll, I'll do this. 
to say, grab it out of the air instead of <laughs> going down here and say, <laughs> pulling it out of the <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere else. We'll try to keep the show clean. <laughs> Sub Subterranean regions. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I may have to uh, take a trip over to Smoky Mountain Knife Works and uh, see about uh, adding to my collection. Yeah. It is. Uh, it is dangerous though, because it, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's easy to spend your knife allowance on. Oh, I'll get 15 of these things, uh, you know, and I'll have them all around and I'll open and close them and, and, and I'll look for work to do with them. Right. Well, what'd you get like six or seven for less I, than a hundred bucks? Yeah. Well, this was a, this was all, you know, in the name of research. Uh, oh, absolutely. I, of course. So, oh, honey. So the, honey, <laughs> the first one included a knife for honey. So the first one had five knives mm. in it. And then I, I saw, yeah. And then I saw that they had come out with one of the, or that I, this one, I got from someone on Amazon who, who, who totally price gouged me, but whatever, live and learn, you know? So I got seven of them all together. Well, no, six Rough Riders and one Marbles all together for less than a hundred bucks or probably wow. right, right at a hundred bucks. Wow. wow. Definitely my kind of, uh, my kind of knives, man, my kind of price range. <laughs> Let me suggest uh, one other thing, Jim. Yeah, they're also good giveaway knives. You know, like you have them for a while, yeah. and uh, sometimes, uh, like I just sent, a, I just sent our good buddy Joe Frazier a knife, uh, and then uh, in it, I threw a little case slip joint. I have a little tiny one that you know I just never use, and I thought, why not? It's a good little, you know, uh, uh, good little giveaway kind of thing. And I think these uh, Rough Riders would be great for that too, because you're not just giving something to give it. It's actually a high quality knife, but you're not uh, breaking the bank. So there, I'm done. Rough Rider. Good. Yeah. I, I don't know what else <laughs> to say about it. I, uh, like I said, I uh, think I'll be uh, taking a trip over to Smoky Mountain Kni Knife Works and uh, uh, seeing what I can get uh, for my collection. Cause I really like uh, several of those styles. Uh, before we move on to talk about a knife that's uh, going out of your collection, want to uh, let folks know that our uh, podcast is brought to you in part by the Get Upside app. And uh, you can go to uh, thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas, thenifejunkie.com slash save on gas, and uh, start saving money on those uh, pesky little gas purchases that you need to buy all the time. And, you know, every time you fill up the tank, you need to need to buy gas, why not save money at the same time? So uh, if you go to the knifejunkie.com slash save on gas, the knifejunkie.com slash save on gas, you can get the get, get Upside app and uh, earn cash back every time you fill up your tank. So why don't you start doing that today? It'd be a no brainer. So a lot of great knives coming in. And we talked about last week, uh, a few knives going out and that kind of thing. Uh, a Riot that you've got is uh, is leaving your collection. Yes. And then I will tie this into my tip of the week because it's all, you see, it's all oh. woven together, Jim. It's amazing how that works. Yeah, it is. Uh, so, yeah, I, I am I am parting ways with my Riot Crossroads, which was a knife that I, oh, God, I, I, I obsessed over getting for a long time. And then I always, you know, it's just always a little bit too much for me to spend. And, um, uh, and then eventually I bought it, the, the one that I had with the G green G10 handle from uh, Epic Snuggle, Snuggle Bunny after uh, one of our shows. Uh, I knew he was getting rid of it. And I said, please, I'd love to have that. I've had it and uh, I love it, but just not enough and, and never have to say that. You can't hear me. It's locked up right now. So uh, I, I reached out to our good friend, the Knife Whisperer. I know he is a Riot um, aficionado. And uh, so I told him I have this one and uh, we're going to make that we're going to make that happen. He's he's going to take this. And it makes me feel good because because I I have a rule about not giving away gift knives. And that was starting to bleed into not get getting rid of knives that I've bought from people that I like. I'm like, okay, now, now I'm getting ridiculous, you know, All right. Just because I, you know, if, uh, if, um, if he had, uh, if, if Austin had just given me the knife, there's no way I would have gotten rid right. of it, but I, it was a transaction. Right. I bought it and he was selling it. And so yeah. anyway, it's, it's moving on and I'll get a little scratch to, to sort of, uh, fill up the coffers, uh, from, from recent purchases. Uh, so that's uh, heading out. And then also maybe, maybe the Topps mm -hmm. Ranger's Edge dagger. That might be going too. Because oh, yeah. 
I, I really want that Spartan Harzy dagger. And, you know, I don't find myself walking around with daggers often. I don't need too many of them. I like the tops one, but, uh, you know, it might be better in the hands of someone who's actually going to use it. Uh, so um, just to have as a collection and showpiece, I really would like that uh, Spartan made Harzy dagger. So, yeah, the uh, the the tops Ranger's Edge might be on the way out. But this is this is where I'm going to segue into my tip of the week, which is keep the box. Now, it's funny coming from me. That's kind of the the pot calling the kettle black because uh, I used to always tell my wife like, oh, why, why are we holding on to the crock pot box? And what's the box for the weed eater doing? Like, why, why are we taking up all this space? We don't need it. We're never going to return it. If we do, we'll return it without the box. And uh, so I finally got, you know, that was one of those, one of those little stupid battles you have when you first get married. And, and uh, so we worked that out. Uh, one of the few sort of arguments I won perhaps um, not an argument, but, uh, uh, but here I am saying, keep the box. When you get a knife, keep the damn box because for a couple of reasons, uh, one of them is that when you resell it, you'll feel justified in whatever price you ask because you're sending it back the way it came to you. You know, right. uh, it, it also, I believe it also allows you to ask for more, uh, to ask for the premium. If you don't have the yes. box, it's kind of like a little bit, um, yeah, no, that's uh, that's one of the things. Uh, being a, a reseller, I always keep the original packaging because, yeah, you can get more money for it that way. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Also, I'm surprised it took you a long time to figure that one out. Well, you know, it it didn't with the knives. You know, for a long time, I was hiding the boxes. Like, if she finds this, she's gonna know I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> but I, I guess she probably <laughs> already knew that. Uh, but another good reason, and you being a reseller, this is this is probably also works into your equation, is that it is obviously shipping material. You you put it yes. in the box when you sell it to you know when I send this crossroads uh, off to Joe, it's already packaged in something that's right. keeping it nice and and, right. and safe. Then you have to just wrap something around the box to keep the box safe. But in those little um, you know eight dollar and thirty cent. Uh, small boxes or medium sized boxes, priority mailboxes, it'll all fit in there snugly. And yeah. uh, so you're saving a little bit of money on packaging on packing too, but people like the box, I, you yeah, know, absolutely. On, on these sort of products. Like for instance, here's the new Emerson box and uh, you know, it's nothing but a black cardboard box. It's got a little shininess to it. But uh, if I ever sell this thing, uh, I'll, I'll put it back in there, I'll send it yeah. off. Absolutely. Well, and I think I mentioned uh, one of the most uh, recent shows about uh, saving money when you're shipping. Uh, don't forget to use Pirate yeah. Ship, uh, PirateShip.com. Uh, most of the times it'll save you money off the uh, uh, USPS retail price. So uh, if you're not familiar with it, definitely uh, you know start checking out uh, Pirate Ship. We don't have any affiliate relationship or affiliate link or anything like that. We're not making any money off recommending it. It's just a, a good way to, to save money if you're using the U.S. Postal Service. And I think they uh, get their uh, their um, discounts much like Amazon and eBay and other folks. They, they have so much volume going out that they're able to then um, – pass along some savings on the USPS, you know, retail rate to customers. So the more folks that uh, I think use them, you know, the, the better they'll be able to offer those discounts in the future. Mm -hmm. So just a, a good way to, insurance. yeah, good way to save a little bit of money. Yeah. All right. Good tip of the week this week, uh, keeping the box uh, on the off chance that uh, you want to start selling some knives in the future. And, uh, you know, maybe Bob uh, keeping the boxes for so many years uh, even though he had no intention of selling anything, uh, actually uh, did come into uh, to play when he did start to uh, try to reduce and refine a little bit and, and get rid of some knives. You had the original box and backing materials, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And it definitely uh, definitely made the whole process easier. Yeah. All right. Don't forget uh, tomorrow night, if you're listening to this podcast on Wednesday when it comes out, uh, patrons get it early on uh, Tuesdays. So uh, just another uh, reason to join the Knife Junkies Patreon group. But uh, anyway, regardless of the day of the week, Thursday is our Thursday night knives. That's at uh, 10 p.m. every Thursday night. You can catch that on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel as well as the Knife Junkies Facebook group, thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube or thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. If you want to catch uh, some past episodes that you might have missed, go to thenifejunkie.com slash Thursday 
thenifejunkie.com slash Thursday. You'll find the current and all past episodes right there on that webpage. This coming Sunday, Bob, our interview show is uh, Curtis Iovito from uh, Spartan Knives. She had a chance to uh, catch up with Curtis. So that's coming up this Sunday on the interview show. Yeah, yeah. What a cool guy. What a great company. And uh, man, Spartan Blades, uh, they are a big player. You know, anyone right now listening knows about Spartan Blades. And man, they're a small operation. It's like six of them. Uh, pumping these things out. I think it's I think it's awesome. I think Curtis is cool and I really like the direction uh, the company is going. Uh, you know, and it doesn't doesn't hurt that they work with some absolutely legendary uh, knife designers. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah, I, th- I can't remember the the details, but you know, it wasn't much after a year or two after they, you know, were founded and started going that they were uh, winning, uh, you know, Blade Show Awards, mm-hmm. you know, so uh, definitely a definitely a cool interview to listen to this coming Sunday on the uh, theknifejunkie.com. Uh, you can find that at theknifejunkie.com, as well as uh, the Knife Junkies YouTube, as well as on the uh, listening app of your choice, your podcast player app, Stitcher or whatever um, uh, app you like to use. You can find us both in audio and uh, video. Uh, anything I've missed, Bob, in our uh, in our show notes for today as we... Uh, no, that's a up. long one. <laughs> no. <laughs> All I want to say, like my final word of the week is definitely, and you might want to go wide for this, Jim, uh, definitely oh, keep okay. an open oh, mind. Okay. Keep an open mind because you might discover some gems like this uh, $12 cotton sampler with beautiful stag bone or this odd shaped self-defense, a very unique, cool knife. I mean, like without an open mind, you're, you're going to miss this stuff. So, uh, you know, even if, even if uh, ordering something inexpensive in Chinese makes you bristle, just give it a try. And then if you don't like it, put it in a box and give it away next time you sell a knife. There you go. <laughs> the final word from the knife junkie. For Mr. Knife Junkie himself, Bob Namarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie over here, Jim Person. Definitely want to thank you for joining us on the Knife Junkie podcast. This has been episode number 151. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. We'll be right back.